Here we go. So there it is. What we're going to do is um, is find a least squares estimate of a vector of parameters theta, grayscale values for an image. Find the theta that minimizes the data, in other words, minimizes the discrepancy between my model of the data, a theta, and what I actually measured, m. So this is just the L2 norm. Find the theta that minimizes it. That's just the least squares cost function or objective function. We're all happy with that starting point. Right. Good. Uh, the picture, just to give you a warm up on that, um, that's like saying, imagine theta only had two values. Theta 1, theta 2, axis theta 1, axis theta 2. Um, and then I could look at, for any given position in that plane, that's a particular image, I could look at the cost, the objective function value for any particular position on this plane. So here I'm just depicting a, a red profile through some notion of a cost function. Yeah, any given theta is going to give me a different level of discrepancy. If theta is way off, then I get a big discrepancy. If A theta is very close to M, then I get a small discrepancy. And I'm trying to find the theta which mapped through A gives me the smallest possible discrepancy with the data. This is pure data fidelity. Okay? Um, so that's the depiction here. Um, red is what I'm, the function I'm trying to minimize. And I'm going to say from, so theta zero is actually a point in this plane here. And what I'm going to do is, I've, this is the gradient gamma and what I'm saying is, if this is the red is depicting that cost function for different instances of theta, what I'm trying to do is find, if that's my gradient for this value of theta, how big a step do I take to minimise that cost function? Okay, that's what we mean by steepest descent. Right. Iterative least squares. So there's the measured data is equal to our model plus some error. And that error can be due to noise and bias. Now to present this to you in a very general framework, you could have a general least squares problem where you've got some matrix A, some vector X, some response measurement Y. And what we're going to do is say, well, M minus A theta is the error. So I've just talked you through the least squares cost function and we're trying to minimise that discrepancy between my model and my data. There it is from matrix vector now written in subscript notation. So again, a bit like your question earlier about theta j, theta v, the same thing is going on here. I'm summing over b because I'm doing a matrix vector multiplication. I'm forward modelling. So when I do that, when I've done that summation, I only have a dependency on i left behind, which means I can compare with mi, the measured data. Right, uh, we've touched already on iterative methods, but those methods can be slow or we can get a question um, as we have today and say, but what step size do we use? Okay, so that's what this, these slides are trying to answer. First of all, we can optimize the step size. Secondly, we won't have time today. Um, we can do even better because even if you optimize the step size to minimize the cost function there and then look at the gradient and minimize the step size, that is not optimal because you end up in a zigzag pattern. But nonetheless, it's still a pleasing idea as a starting point to say just you look at the gradient and maximize the descent in each gradient direction. But it's not the best. The best is conjugate gradient. Okay? So that's our objective. Find the theta that minimizes that. What we're going to do, no surprise, partial derivative. There's the partial derivative of that. This should be very familiar to you by now. I've repeated this so many times. So the partial derivative, two comes down the front, half is gone. Uh, derivative of AI, AIB, theta B, with respect to theta J, which is just one of the terms in there, is going to be AIJ. So that comes out the front there by the chain rule of differentiation. Okay, so I'm rearranging that expression now. So minus sigma I, AIJ, MI, plus sigma aij with uh, that term, minus minus is a plus. Now you guys should be experts in translating this into matrix vector. 
That is none other than, look, if we're summing down the rows of matrix I and weighting them with the input vector, that has to be A transpose M. So this is minus A transpose M. Again, we're summing down the rows. This is, a, this is saying use these as weighting factors for the rows of, of matrix A. So that has to be A transpose. And what is this? Well, this is saying use theta as weighting factors for the columns of matrix A. That is just conventional matrix vector multiplication. So A theta, A transpose on A theta, and this is minus A transpose A. Right. Incidentally, just for your convenience, just a little reminder, what we could do is say, oh, well, we've got the gradient, set that equal to zero. So that means we'd get the directly squared solution, theta LS. So we'd call that, if we set this equal to zero, then theta that, that fulfills that would be the least squares estimate. And so we'd have A, A transpose A, theta LS equal to, put that onto the right hand side, A transpose M. Therefore, in one go, we could do that all done and dusted, as I've repeatedly said though, completely impractical. So we can't do that. And of course I prefer that you, if you wanted to do that, if you've got a small system, I'd really recommend you do the A transpose A minus 1 using singular value decomposition and the pseudo inverse. That would be my tip. And in fact, once I did have a kind of mini consultancy role with a company and they had a small tomographic system, I couldn't believe it. And so I actually talked them through how to do a pseudo inverse um, via SVD and it worked beautifully. A uh, very rare example where you've actually got a, a problem that can be that size. Anyway, for 3D medical imaging, not available. So here we are, gradient of the least squares cost function. So now what I'm showing is that that gradient of the least squares cost function is just this. Well, I've just swapped the terms around. Okay, and you should be familiar, and again, maybe the question about earlier about why H, well, again, it's good to get a handle on H because it's cropping up here. Even though our cost function doesn't even look at H, our um, directly squared solution needed H, and even our iterative method is already looking like it's got something like H in it, and in fact, I'll even call it H right now. So A transpose A, <coughs> is H, and H is a real symmetric matrix, and you saw a visual example of it earlier. A transpose N is just the back projection of my sign graph. So, that thing there, this is the gradient of the least squares cost function. So it's saying if I have some image, some candidate image, and I've got some data n, then I can find the gradient of the least squares cost function by forward projecting my image, back projecting it, that gives me h theta. Then I look at how different that is to if I just back project my measured data. So there's the intuition for this side of the room, and for the mathematicians over here, um, this is the derivative of the uh, least squares cost function. So the gradient is just the difference between back projected images. And I'm going to call that a vector gamma, which is an image. Okay, if I forward project an image and back project it, I've got in quotes, an image. If I back project my measured data, I've got an image. A difference of images image. is an image. Yes. So my gradient, my search direction, is an image. So that means if I've got any candidate current estimate of my image, and apologies for this, I'm going to be using, just because I'm got time to change all of my slides, I'm going to use a subscript K, sorry, for, the, for indicating um, which iterate I'm in. So th vector theta subscript K, okay, that's not the scalar theta subscript V, this is a vector theta subscript K, means a kth iteration. Okay, mm -hmm. come on, this is not, I, I think you can forgive me that. 
people do, you'd have to be easy with that because some people put it there, some people put it in a superscript. So you've got to be easy with both. So for any given candidate vector theta, iterate k, it could be a uniform starting image or something like that, I can easily, without storing the system matrix, I can just analytically forward project, analytically back project, I can find the gradient of the least squares cost function with computational ease. Okay? Good. Right. So you've already had a primer for this. So if I'm at an image estimate theta zero, then we know for least squares, I've actually got to subtract off the gradient. We know that. But what I can do is generally write it as theta plus some step size that we need to optimize of a gradient. So this is a bit like that question about the land web iteration, what is tau? Well now we're saying, okay, the tau before is now alpha zero, and the gradient I'm just explicitly calling gamma zero here. Okay? So we could, in fact, you know, if, we're, if we're really struggling with stuff, we could go, okay, well, I can't think hard and long enough. I'm just going to use a tiny little alpha, and, and that would probably work. That's like using a very tiny learning rate in machine learning. You know, if in doubt, just creep along to the solution and hope you don't get trapped in some local minimum. But here we've got a convex objective function. If that would work, it could just take forever. But we want to optimize alpha. So we know that the gradient gamma zero at an estimate theta zero is, take your theta zero, forward project, back project, compare it to the back project data, that gives you the gradient at that position. So that's theta zero, which is a point in this 2D plane depicting the case of theta being just a two pixel image. Then we want to find how much alpha zero to use for that gradient to minimize the cost function. So use step size alpha to reach a new image, theta 1, where the gradient at that point, right, this is the key thing you've got to understand um, for steepest descent. We're going to use a step size that is sufficiently large such that we get a new position, a new estimate, theta 1, where the gradient there is orthogonal to the gradient at the current location. This is really, really important, which is why I've got a nice little graphical thing to try and show it to you. So if I'm here, so theta zero, I should show it as a point in the plane here, and this blue is the cost function. So I'm there, and I've got some gradient gamma zero. What I'm going to do Can you see that if I move theta, so theta zero is here, theta one is there, for example, the blue is like a surface showing me the cost function. Here the gradient is in that direction. And when I, when I drop to the minimum of the cost function in that search direction only, of course the global minimum is going to be somewhere else, but a profile through this cost surface when I get to a different theta and look at the gradient, if that gradient is orthogonal, so, so imagine I've got this parabola here and I've got some search direction here, then as I go down, that, that gradient will point towards the minimum. But if I'm searching in this direction only, which is like a profile through my bold, which is my cost function, then here the gradient is saying go that way to get to the minimum and then it just, as you descend here, you'll get to the minimum along that profile when that gradient is saying the minimum is that way. When that gradient is at 90 degrees to the gradient from when it was up there. I'll show you, I, I hope, in fact, let me just see if that... So imagine just moving theta smoothly down here Constantly look and the gradient slowly comes out to the point of here saying, okay, okay, because that blue profile is like a slice, a profile through a bowl that is my overall loss function. So do you understand that concept?
Maybe I could show you another slide. Let me see if I've got... Yeah, here we go. This should help. So I'm at a point theta zero. Okay, that corresponds to a two pixel image in this case. And I'm evaluating the gradient. Okay, gradient is just forward project, back project, look at the difference, that's the gradient. So the gradient is, is uh, an image, and I want to know how much of that image am I adding on to, here's the blue line, the cost surface. And what I want to do in that search direction is I want to descend to the minimum, because look at this blue, the global minimum is over there, but if you look at a profile according to my search direction here, which is the gradient of the least squares cost function, then the best step size that it seems I can take, when all I know is that image estimate and that gradient, all I can do is hope to get to there. Because then this thing starts going up again. Goes up, down, up. So before I had that parabola, that parabola corresponds to a profile through this bowl. And where I need to end up is at the absolute minimum, the global minimum of that bowl. And with steepest descent, I'm just going to say, add on a sufficient amount of the gradient such that I minimise the cost function just for that search direction. So I think I've got some graphics to show that, I hope. There you go. Can you see those guys? See those black arrows? So initially, as I go along there, look, notice how they're pointing towards always where, you know, so I could take a profile through there, profile through there, profile, but here, I'm only here, and I've only got that access to that gradient, okay? But I'm looking to get to a position theta one, which is equal to the original position, plus some optimized step size alpha times that search direction gamma zero. This is the key, and if you agree for the need of orthogonality between my current vector for the gradient and the, the, the gradient of where I end up, if you agree that they need to be orthogonal, then you'll be happy with the derivation from here on. But first of all, are you happy with this graphic? Um, right, so let's do that then. Now here, here is a very general case now where I've got some search direction D0. Now we know for steepest descent, that's the gradient. It's going to help you when you get to conjugate gradient to think of a search direction. So D0 is a search direction. In our case, it's the gradient. So if we've got some search direction D0, we want to find the best step size alpha to minimize the cost function in that search direction. So, and we also know by the arguments we just had that when that search direction is orthogonal to the gradient at the new position that we're trying to find, then we know we've minimised the cost function at that point. So there's D0. What we need to say then is the gradient at the new update position theta1, and what is the gradient at any given theta 1 or theta whatever, or if, if theta 1, the gradient we know already is if you forward project or back project, I always use h, and look at the difference with the back projected image g. So h theta 1 minus g is gamma 1, the gradient of where we want to be theta 1. We know that if we're there, then that gradient needs to be orthogonal to d0. Now, hopefully, you understand about scalar products and orthogonality, which is at the core of Fourier analysis and so on, refer you to signals and systems lectures and so on. That defines orthogonality. If you take a vector in scalar product with another vector, and if you get zero, then they are orthogonal. Another way of writing the scalar product, or the inner product, or the dot product, is to say vector 1 transpose vector 2. If vector 1 transpose vector 2 equals 0, then vector 1 vector 2 are orthogonal to each other. Hence that expression. 
So all we do then is follow that through. All I've done there is just um, substitute theta 1 is theta 0 plus alpha 0 d0. So I've just substituted that in for theta 1. So h theta 0 plus alpha 0 h d0 minus g. It's just a simple substitution for the next update. Then if I work this through, um, so I need to do the transpose of that bracket. So that's h theta 0 transpose times d0 plus alpha 0 h d0 transpose d0 plus minus g transpose d0. That's just expanding that through. Then I rearrange the terms. So alpha h d0 transpose d0. So that term I've put here. And then I've taken the g transpose d0 and put it on the right hand side. That's here. Then I've taken h theta 0 transpose d0 and put that subtracted that off from both sides. This is just basic rearrangement of terms. Then um, all I've done here is take um, alpha 0 outside the bracket and just put h d0 transpose d0 divide both sides by that. So then I'm left with alpha 0 on the left hand side. Yeah. And um, then all I've done here is apply, again, basic uh, linear algebra. So you can see I've got d0 and I've got g transpose minus h theta 0 transpose. So I've just factored d0 with that. So that numerator is that numerator. And here another basic rule of um, linear algebra matrix vector is if I've got h times a vector transpose, that's the same as um, d0 transpose times h transpose, but because h is a real symmetric matrix, h transpose equals h. So therefore I get that. What is this? g minus h theta 0. It's gamma 0, it's the gradient at my current estimate theta 0. Thank you. And here, for steepest descent, my initial search direction is also gamma zero. Okay, using the gradient as my search direction. So therefore, um, we can say that step size alpha zero is sorry. So gamma zero was h theta minus g. Yes, yeah, so this is minus gamma zero. So it's minus gamma zero transpose d zero divided by d0 transpose h d0. Now, for this algorithm, what is the search direction d0? It is just the gradient. So therefore, if we're using just the simplicity of the gradient for our search direction to finally answer the question, what is the step size to use? Well, seemingly it's this, but it's still suboptimal, which is why you need contrary gradient. But that is the step size that will absolutely minimise the cost function in your current search direction if you're defining that search direction exclusively by the gradient of the least squares cost function. And so you end up with that formula there, saying that if you're at some image theta k, then you can find the gradient gamma k, Notice this, okay? It's a scalar, yeah? Gamma is an image. Gamma is an image. Gamma transpose is the same image. That's a scalar product. So that's a scalar. Gamma through H, that's A, then A transpose, is an image. Gamma transpose, that's another. So it's a scalar divided by a scalar, is a scalar. This is a real value, it is a step size, okay? So there is the steepest descent algorithm. There's the expression for the gradient, h theta minus g, which means, um, and also we know from before that h theta k is actually a transpose a, and this is just a transpose m, and there you are. So that's the steepest descent algorithm. Hopefully you followed along and are convinced. <laughs>